Now we're going to demonstrate some of the menu settings that you might have to utilize in the 88s and 8900s. First, as we've told you before, the set button is the one in the middle in the lower row of buttons that's not marked. Push that and release it once. That'll put you in menu mode. These menus are in alphabetical order. They also have a numeric value that if you look in the manual, it'll tell you what each one of these do and what number they are. So if we move that forward, you'll find the first one we want to show you how to do is to lock the keypad and the display so that the frequency, for example, cannot be changed. You click it up until you find the word lock. Then you use the tuning knob to decide you want to change that value. You push in on the tuning knob and it, you can then rotate it and it will toggle between on and off. So if you notice when it's toggled to the on position, you get an extra icon on the display. Right above the set button shows a little key that indicates it's in the lock mode. If that's what you want to do, you click the tuning button again, push in and release, and that sets that lock button. So now if you take it out of menus by hitting the set button, now if you try to tune it someplace other than what you had it set for, it doesn't allow you to do that. You'll also notice that that key is now displayed on, in the middle above the set button, indicating to you that it's locked. If you'd like to unlock it, you just reverse the procedure. You start by hitting the set button, go to lock, push in on the tuning knob, rotate it into the off position, select it by pushing the tuning knob again, and then get out of the menu modes by pushing the set button. Now you'll be able to change the frequency or memory at your discretion. The next one we're going to show you is how to set the CTCSS tones. We know that these often change at the discretion of the repeater owners, and so what we'll do is show you how to fix that. You'll go in using the set button, get, bring up the menus, and then again they're in alphabetical order, so you're going to roll up to where it says tone. So don't go looking for CTCSS, it's not in there. When you get to tone, there are actually two functions for tone. One is F and one is M. We want to start with M. Again, to select that, you push in on the tuning knob, and you have several choices here. The first one is encode. That means you're transmitting a tone, but it doesn't need a tone coming back from the repeater to open the squelch. The next selection is where it's encode and decode. That means not only are you going to send out a tone to open the squelch, but it has to hear a tone coming back from the repeater to open the squelch. Very handy in high noise environments like a metropolitan area. The next one you see will be DCS, which is digital coded squelch. Generally speaking, we do not use digital coded squelch within the Casey Hart environment, so we'll skip past that one. And then off, that means there's no tones applied at all. So let's assume for a minute that you wanted to apply encode only to your uh, frequency that you had picked. You select ENC only, you push in to select it, and then that takes you back out to tone mode. Problem is you're not done yet. You also have to tell it what frequency for those subaudible tones. So go to tone F for frequency, select that again by pushing in the tuning knob, and select the tone frequency that you want. They display in the frequencies that they are. This, of course, is also known as private line or PL tones or channel guard if you're a GE person. You can scroll through those. They're all the standard uh, tone sets. Pick which one you want, push in on the tuning knob, and then take yourself out of the menus by pushing the set button. And that's now applied. If you've done that to a predetermined channel in the memories, that will apply until you power off the radio. If you want to make that permanent in the memories, you need to write it into the memory by overriding what's already there. One of the challenges with any Yaesu radio is accidentally engaging the wires feature. It's certainly easy to do. All you have to do is click on the button on the lower left hand side of the radio. Now, whenever you transmit, you'll have a tone preceding the first second of your audio. Unfortunately, this cuts off the first part of your audio and is quite annoying to listening stations. In order to disable this feature permanently, you can set the menu to disable wires. In order to reach the wires disabling menu, press the set button. Rotate the main band dial knob to select 17.
17, which is INET. Press the main band dial knob. Rotate the main band dial knob to select Internet MEM. Press the main band dial knob. Now rotate the main band dial knob to select 15 DTMF W. Press the main band dial knob momentarily and rotate the main band dial knob to select a memory that shows six dots. All of them show six dots, so this should be easy. Now press the set key momentarily. Now you'll notice when we turn internet on, when you key up, there's no DTMF at the beginning of your transmission. That's all there is to it. Okay, the next capability we want to show you in the menus is crossband repeat. Let's talk a little bit about what that means and how you configure for it. Crossband repeat in these radios allows you to transmit in on one frequency and it will automatically receive that and then retransmit it on another frequency on the opposite side of the radio. We use crossband repeat in the KC Heart program a lot to give us the ability to be mobile within the facility, for example, talk on your handheld and yet still have the power output capabilities and the external antennas of our fixed radios that you see uh, here today. So let's talk about how you would set that up. If you're not familiar with the concept of crossband repeat, the first thing you have to determine is what simplex frequency you want to operate on from your handheld to the base radio. In our configuration here, you'll see that we've picked 445.700 as a simplex frequency as is it part of the standard band plan for the UHF band. On the right-hand side of the radio, we have picked 145.29, which is one of our local repeaters that we want to talk to on a region-wide basis. Now, once you've picked that, you have to go to the menus to start the cross-band repeat process. First, you're going to hit the select button like you always do to get into the menus. And there it is, magically, XRPT, which stands for cross-band repeat. Once you've got that up, if you haven't got there, you'll roll through it and you'll find it under X in the alphabetic listing. You're going to push and release on the upper right hand tuning knob and that tells you that it's ready to start. If you push that one more time, it will actually put it in that mode. So now if you were to transmit on 445.700, if it receives something, it will retransmit it out on 145.290. We can simulate that by opening the squelch on the simplex side of the crossbander. You'll notice it transmits now on both sides. So long as that squelch is open or it's receiving a signal, it will continue to transmit. Now to turn this functionality off, again you go back to the menu, go back to crossband repeat, push the tuning knob to select it, and then push the start the menu button again and that will toggle it off. So now if you key the radio with the microphone, it should only key on the right hand side. In zero CJ testing. And that's how crossband repeat works. I would suggest that you practice this routinely, make sure you're capable of it, and decide up front early on what your preferred settings would be for this configuration.